It's no secret Lord Guides has thought about resigning before, but Thank last you. night he went ahead and did it, and today we found out why. In his resignation letter, Lord Guides says he'd been asked to consider what amounted to a deliberate breach of the ministerial code, and he said, this request has placed me in an impossible and odious position. The idea that a Prime Minister might to any degree be in the business of deliberately breaching his own code is an affront. A deliberate breach, or even an intention to do so, would be to suspend the provisions of the code to suit a political end. In reply, the Prime Minister said he was surprised and had merely wanted to consult on a matter of trade policy. In seeking your advice before any decision was taken, he wrote, I was looking to ensure that we acted properly with due regard to the ministerial code. This argument seems to be about tariffs on Chinese steel imports, frankly very different to the kind of issues that have dogged Lord Guite in his 14 months in the job. He was furious, for instance, when Boris Johnson admitted he had not shared WhatsApp messages relevant to the investigation about decorating the Downing Street flat. Lord Guite said there was a legitimate question as to whether the Prime Minister broke the ministerial code over Partygate. And on Tuesday, in a gruelling committee session, he did talk about We've possibly resigning. It's always on the agenda um, as an available um, uh, remedy to a particular problem and one that my predecessor indeed exercised. For this MP, the resignation comes as no surprise. We know that Christopher Guy at the beginning of the week already felt that he was only just credible staying in his position because he thought that the Prime Minister had broken the ministerial code on several um, occasions. Um, and, you know, there just comes a point when you go, um, you're burning me and actually I'm going to resign, but I think you're the person who should resign. The Right Honourable Christopher Guite. Previously, he was Private Secretary to the Queen, but it seems working for the Prime Minister was a job too far for this distinguished public servant. Well, if you think that all sounds a little mysterious and perhaps a little murky, you're not alone. Thankfully, Andy has the ability to cut through the guff and can tell us what's really going on, Andy. What is happening? <laughs> Well, you're right, Dan. Um, for a lot of people, this whole story of international tariffs and the ministerial code really doesn't add up, and we're wondering if there's still more to come out about this. But what does add up through all this is that clearly Lord Guite was absolutely fed up after his 14 months in the job. In fact, today, the Prime Minister's official spokesman agreed that it would be fair to say that this was the last straw that broke the camel's back after a very difficult 14 months. And the fact is now, Boris Johnson has lost not one but two ethics advisers, and a lot of people are pointing out this seems to be a very difficult job to do, to put it politely. So difficult, in fact, that Dan Street, instead of just saying, right, we're going to find somebody to fill Lord Guite's shoes, and that would be a pretty difficult job in itself, Downing Street is now suggesting that they want to review the whole process and come up with a new mechanism, maybe, to enforce the ministerial code.